how do you join the army after your dad was a Marine Corps <laughs> powerlifting coach that turned you on to your sport <laughs> and a author helping people become a certified powerlifting um, trainer and also uh, a coach. We have Lord <laughs> Elliot with us today. So we're excited to have Lord with us today. And uh, I love that, Lord. I mean, one of the things, and Steve, I'm so glad you're here. Tell us about your shirt. The Ohana, yeah, it's family. And uh -huh. it's, um, it's autistic, uh, it's for support of autism. I love that. Uh, I have an autistic stepson. And um, I think the kids are great. And it's oh, just awareness. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I saw that and you, Lord talked about it. So if you're out there. You know, Steve um, is our uh, uh, host, co-host today, and he has a, a store called Sportslanders West. And if you're out there and you're wanting a straight shooter for supplements, you got to talk to Steve. And if you're out there and you're training, you want to come to Lord Elliot over at NOS uh, Academy of uh, Strength and Power. That's part of that. Hey, I, I, I believe in you guys. I, <laughs> I, I really do. So I, I think that uh, as you're sitting here... Um, and I think some of the, uh, the idea might be we're just a bunch of ironheads. <laughs> Pretty but much. You, yes. You, you know, that's what they thought in my yeah. area. I think they go to you guys now, and you guys are classier. When I went <laughs> to school, they t said I was a caveman <laughs> and that my way was going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are bringing in a great new wave of expertise to the muscle industry here in town. You know, there again, Steve, you always um, uh, wear it well. And when people come to find out what makes you tick, you let them know. And I love it's Jesus first. And then, hey, I can help you with supplements. And Lord, your reputation goes before you. And I think that's something that we want to talk about. So you got into the sport of powerlifting because your dad was a Marine. What do they call the Marines? Jarheads? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I can't comment. <laughs> I cannot comment. He, he'll reach through that camera right now. Um, he, yes. he can contest yes. that. Well, well as, as we do get a lot of veterans on our shows, um, they talk about how they joke around and yeah. they talk about each other and things like that. But he was the uh, down and stationed in um, El Toro, right, yep. the area. Yep. And uh, so he had a love for iron Yeah, from a young age. Uh, he he got uh, the bug bite, the, the iron bite, uh -huh. in, uh, while he was in Okinawa, Japan. Oh wow! And uh, you know, there, you know, being a military brat, you don't see your your father for quite a few years. So he started the sport in Okinawa, and then came back. So he was an innovator, just like you. Yeah. So he started with he started the sport in, uh, I believe it was 1985, and when he came back, he picked me up and he said, "Hey." We're going to start doing this. I said, great. This is a lot of fun. I love that. So, so Lord, as we might jump in there right now, what's it like to have a dad say as, to a son, we're going to do this? Um, you know, what? it's, it's, I, I love my father and whatever he did, he was my hero. I love that. And my father watching him do his training in the Marine Corps, uh, trap, you know, I lived in England for a year and Germany for a couple of years as, as a toddler, but I remember growing up and seeing him in action, in, in training, and I just said, man, that's, that's, that's my hero. Did he establish in you something that you carry over today? Because, I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't realize it, and we always like to talk about it and joke around about it, because powerlifting is, I think, the essence of, um, of the um, foundation physical training i mean a lot of people would see a sport that i participated in and it's all visual we were the side effect from power lifting and lifting weights yeah i mean we you know it really was the bodybuilding industry was a side effect i mean when i was first competing back in the late 70s there would be a power lifting meet and during the break they'd have a bodybuilding show. Right. That was the I way was it went. I was going to say, that's the way, I mean, you watch it, that's the way it was back yeah. in the day. It was yeah. the secondary, you were the break. Yeah, it, 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 and so we were just a side effect. But as you had a dad that started it, I mean, he basically gave you the foundation, the technique, which I think is important, and that's what I love, the fact that you teach it, yeah. and you wrote a book on it. So I, I, I want to just back up here, and I really want to explain my upbringing as it was more of, I have brought m our, our family name this far. It's up to you. Here's a torch. 
to 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 go further with it. So my ancestors, you know how I get my name, Lord, is actually a title of of my ancestors who are queen and king of the village in the Philippines. Oh wow! I so that. my I sister has it. Yeah. My sister's title is Lady. So coming from the lineage of where my father was, he's top E9 master gunnery sergeant, top NCO in El Toro Marine Corps base. You know, this is where he left off. He said, Lord, you have the elegant name. What can you do with it? So that's where the sport, okay, well, um, I did very well as a junior, traveled the country. Uh, I was on ESPN, LA, Los Angeles Times, newspapers, magazines. I, I had a phenomenal career. And what else can I do? Okay, well, I was coaching. I was bringing Pass clients. Pass it on to the next generation. Yeah, I was bringing clients in, and I was training them up, and I was really building my skill sets. So I got my degree in business and, and my master's in x-ray science. And then I moved forward to say, hey, this sport could really use a different viewpoint of coaching certification. And that's where it started. So my, when my father said, you know, here's a torch. How can you do it better? I said, well, my father was also a promoter of the sport, put on powerlifting meets. I love that. And that's where Kenny, you know, Ken Wheeler came in and, 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 and I went to Ken Wheeler, my father, just this, the mentors of my mentors to help me. And they were there, they were there for me. Well, I even saw a few weeks ago, um, Ken, and I guess it was you, and I think you might've been in the picture, Steve, where they were giving a, you were, you, they were offloading a special, uh, uh, a piece of specialty powerlifting equipment from the hog pit yeah. into your gym. And at that moment I told my wife, Kenny is passing the torch to Lord because, you know, I, I got to have an honorary membership to the hog pit, you know, <laughs> honorary. <laughs> Kenny and, um, gosh, some of the old names, the old guys, Sam, Sam Diego and um, Steve Foster and all, Steve the, Foster, all yeah. the older guys that were that, that, that iron, uh, you know, uh, uh, lifting and hefting a lot of weights in the clubs. And uh, so, so when I saw that, I saw that was a literal passing of the torch. Yeah. You know, because now Steve's like me. He's limping around. Not Steve, but Kenny. He's, he comes down the hallway at church kind of limping. And I go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, it's cool to see that, Lord. You, ha you, you, you have earned that even here in Bakersfield from, from, the, from what I consider one of the last guys that I knew that made a difference in the sport of powerlifting in Bakersfield before you literally right. opened up yours. Lord has brought powerlifting into the forefront. He has. He has. It, it, powerlifting there for a while was just something that was kind of in the background. You didn't see it. I, and I tell people all the time, I wish it would have been like this when I was coming up because yeah. by the time I came around, Steve and Sam, they were just the guys who would just kind of like laugh at me in the corner, and like, yeah, whatever, little boy. <laughs> and they had their time had sli slid by, and Lord has really taken the USPA and like here, yes. here it is. It's it's awesome what Lord has done. Well, well, I even see it, Steve, because as we were the offshoot or the or or the side effect from powerlifting, then bodybuilding after pumping iron became the tsunami of normal. And then I think um, that was kind of a fallacy because we've talked about it. A lot of people looked at the visual and you can't achieve that visual without a lot of things that aren't good for you. And that's why Lord and I were talking. I think powerlifting is where people need to stay, cut their teeth in it, learn how to lift heavy weights. These young kids that want to do drugs to get looking like you do, Steve. You can't build a house without foundation. Yeah, I agree. And if they spend a few more years talking to you, Lord, over at NOS Power, They'll get that foundation. The funny thing is, Lord robbed me of my legs probably <laughs> about seven years ago. How did he do that? <laughs> he broke my technique down. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, he, we were, and it was, he uh, recalibrated everything. He did it. He was doing a seminar. And he goes, Steve. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to be there. And, you know, like I said, been with Lord since the beginning. And I was like, I'm going to be there for a seminar. And I'm there. And he's like, Steve, let's use you for a thing. And I, I had an expo. I had to stand for three days. He stole my legs with no weight. <laughs> like nothing. I, it was nothing. He changed my stance, moved here, went there. And I was like, oh, so I'm doing everything wrong. And I've been squatting since I was 16. Yes. But it wasn't proper. And it was just yes. like. Yes, technique is everything. Yeah. yeah. Efficient Learning. biomechanics. So, And that's the great thing about what Lord has done. 
most of the youngsters today they have TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> and you know they got the Liver King. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so they have these things, and they're like, okay, and you no and, and you watch these people, and you're like, and you, I shrug. I can only imagine what Lord does when he sees it. Like, oh my God, that dude's gonna die. <laughs> And just the simple thing that Lord did was like, Steve, look, move your foot here, move your foot here, move this. And I was like, oh, and then for the next three days, I'm at the Olympia going, oh, I got to stand all day <laughs> long and talk to people. And I want to cry. <laughs> it, isn't it fun when you, um, um, you know what will help people? When people come to you, Lord, and they, and they should. If you're out there and you want to get a great kickoff, maybe you're a dad. And I'll say this. If you're a dad and you're wanting to maybe get your son started out in lifting and getting strength you need to come to see lord at nos power because he'll start them off right don't go to the internet don't go to somebody that's your best friend that looks like they can do it go to an expert and that's what i think lord you've done and it's where your dad left you off right past the torch yeah you know and as kenny has literally passed the torch you have become that guy <laughs> Whew! wow that's a heavy squat well, right there well but it is <laughs> uh, honestly you, for me and you please. guys know this you know, I'm the old guy in the gym. Yeah. And they'll come over to me and they'll say, oh, hey, you know, what did you guys do when the dinosaurs roamed the earth? <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell them stuff. But I'll say, Steve, Steve Struthers, uh, when you go for supplements and come to Lord, when you go for training and lifting, spend the time and the money and learn the right way. You know, it, it is because, uh, you know, there again, uh, I'd be facetious in saying I understand the game the way you guys do. And, and I will say just the, one more thing. When Lord broke me down, I had 34 inch thighs when yeah. I was coming up and he still broke me down. Learn. Yes. Never stop learning. I learn. Never stop learning. No, what we, we both understand in this world is that there's always someone bigger, stronger, smarter, more yes. powerful, you know, and there, there's always an upcoming person. So a lot of times my approach to this entire, my, my entire life has been, all right, well, if I'm going to be, if I'm ever going to reach the top, I know that someone else is going to come up and knock me off. Or can I stand on the podium with them? Yes. Can I stand on the podium with them or can I be underneath them to continue to support them? Then I thought, well, how many more can I continue to support to support to stand above me? You know, I've been there. It's time for everyone else to be there. When you break a record, records are meant to be broken. Yeah. So NAS Power, when I designed the gym, it was to bring on more people to involve them more mm -hmm. into the sport, not to limit it, to, to expand it, to maximize it. And so we have a lot of junior coaches who are just starting. Well, that's what my certification is about, getting yes. people involved to teach them how to do things the right way and then mentor them. Yeah. And then I have senior coaches in our gym, just like Evan Snipman and, and Ed Martinez. They're the two most senior coaches I have in the gym. And I, I, I go to support them. And what, the, what are they doing? They're reaching out to, to bring more lifters uh, involved who are touch moving inspiring and it's just a continuous a continuous like like a, a what do you call it multi-level marketing kind of thing you know you it's a huge it. it's snowballing and so this is this was my entire design uh you know teach one teaches five teaches ten what just, just like they say you know you, you give feed, a man a fish there you go exactly you what i was fish. trying to say you, you, know? you, you know what i like about your thought process lord is that the certification is important because it shows that somebody has taken the time right. to learn, like you said, <laughs> you broke your, yes. your technique down yes. <laughs> and you've learned. So it's t getting other people to be able to do that with somebody. And I have, to, I have to commend you in being able to go to an advanced lifter and yeah. say, let me help you. Right. You know, because you are an advanced lifter, Steve. I, I mean, you've I done amazing things. I squatted tons. I could yeah. put a ton of weight on my back in my youth. And it was like. Oh my God, if I knew how to do this right way back when? Steve, isn't, wow. isn't that the crazy thing? That if, if, you know, and that's what I, you know, as the audience is out there, part of our show is to bring you something that's going to help you in your journey. And we do know that a lot of men find themselves in what you guys do. Right. You know, you know it, it's part of the male ego, but right. why not do it with you and do it the correct way and how you do it? You, you know, Lord, and this is the thing that I admire about Steve and I admire about you. How, does you, how has your faith helped you? I know your dads came in and, and surrounded you, but has your health, faith helped you 
through this journey because the, one of the things that you've just spoken to my life right now, it's important to be able to pass something along. Right. And you said something that I didn't think about. You're standing underneath somebody lifting them up. Right. You know, and there's satisfaction in that, isn't there? There is great satisfaction because, you know, I'm being stood up. Yes. And I'm always being stood up every single day of my life. You know, uh, my mom, before she passed, uh, you know, she talked to me. Uh, she, she told me the story, and I said, are you talking about the footsteps? You know, the footprints in the sand. Uh -huh. And, you know, she, and then days later, she, she passed the cancer. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> um, but it's kind of like, you know, I am part of, of so many people's journey, mm -hmm. and that's the satisfaction. Um, just like all those who who paved the road for me to continue past the torch to continue I have to do it better than they did because of all the work the sweat of their brow you know everything they did was to push me up so I've got to continue the work to push others and and it's kind of like you know I am of him I am an extension of him. I am just as powerful if I believe in my true spirit. I am just as powerful as him in this earthly world. So if I can do that, then let's do it. You know, I don't know everything, but what I do know, it's unlimited. I can do whatever I want to do. Not to, and you're also a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also creating. And a student always a student and you're also creating for lack of better verbiage since we are staying on the spiritual path apostles yeah you that's are true. you are getting other for like you know we bring the spirit in you are getting teaching others to fish become fishers they are teaching other people how to fish because you're humble enough to be the teacher right. to go let me show you everything mm -hmm. a lot of people and you, you know how this sport works will show you just enough yeah. to for lack of better verbiage Lord over you yes, to keep you humbled to them and under their shadow where Lord's like, no, nah, go. Yeah. Ch -ch 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 go. Learn it and go. <laughs> and, and, and I think as you help people grab on and fly, like you said, you're allowing them to stand on your shoulders and you've stood on your dad's shoulders. Yeah. You stood on other people's shoulders to help that. And as you've done that, I, I, I think and, and this is something you do too, Steve. You do a lot of this. And you know what's great is like, I can send people out, come to your gym, go to your store, and they come back and say, oh my gosh, that was a great experience. <laughs> when I first met Evan Steidman, um, and he told me he was with you and working with you in that, I said, then you stay there. And Evan's just, I mean, he, he is. He's just that, he's that guy that, you know, you know, you know, move that rock. He's moving that rock till it doesn't move anymore. And he's with you, and it's just neat to hear his stories about how I guess he's going to do another like power lift. I don't know yeah. if he's done it. He's done yeah, it. He just yeah. finished one. Yeah. 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 And, awesome. And, but but I but he but but to make that possible is by being surrounded by good people like you guys to help him achieve that one because I knew how excited he was. Yeah. You know. You know. And of course, he's looking at me and you know saying this may be my last one. I go, holy smokes. <laughs> you know, that makes me feel older than. I really am. Yeah. But it's funny where he says, I want to do well, you know, with all my knowledge and all my injuries and willing. So he's around you guys that are able to help him. And you're able to say, but when you're done with the green lights and the red lights, you know, power lifting, make it or don't make it, there's still a place for you. There is. You know, that, that, that the sport doesn't disregard you and just cast you off. And right. I think that's sad in so many realms where it's, it's only as good as a place you just placed or that you can pass that knowledge on right and help somebody else get back you there. you hear it so much on social media day um that's cool you bench 315 when you're in high school and it's a blow off when it's like you just blew off knowledge yeah and it's crazy how it didn't they blow off knowledge for a TikTok dance instead of listening to knowledge like yes generations plural of knowledge you, you know it's so easy and not just generations of knowledge but reinventing yeah. generations of knowledge right well you, you know as you guys have it you you get these questions from young guys who are young they're full of testosterone i envy you know the chemical manufacturing plant that they have without taking anything 
I mean, I just, I look at them and I go, you just don't get it. You just exploit what you have. Don't get something else. Go to somebody who can give you that knowledge and help you exploit that. And you'll be better off spending those three years between 17, 18, and 21 right. doing it with you than going out and spending money on uh, nonsense. Can I say that? Just sheer nonsense. Take this. Take that. You know, I, 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 I'm on this one, and I, and I don't even know the man. But my son-in-law, who came to me one day and just says, you know, so I'm watching this guy named the Liver King. I go, quit watching him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just eats livers. I go, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I, I go, <laughs> I just said, I go, I go, quit it. And I go, and, and it's funny because I did tell him, I go, go see Steve, talk to that, and uh, the Lord, and he's m moved to Nashville. But, you know, when I saw it affecting somebody that I, I'm around all the time, I like, this gets in their head, you know? And, and everybody wants to chase that star. Right. So I can't imagine if they come into you and you get an advanced lifter and said, let me help you with your technique. Right. And to, to your credit, you listen to him. Yeah. Well, why was I going to argue? Yeah. You, did. you can always learn because the wheel is being reinvented. It's still round, it but it was wood and metal. Or it was a rock at one time. Then somebody made it wood. Then somebody put rubber on it. It's being reinvented. And he's the man that's at in NOS. the forefront of yeah. reinventing the wheel. Well, what I like, too, about what you're doing is you're even following your dad's footstep with promotion. Yeah. That is, I think, something important because Bakersfield used to have a lot of, ev I guess if you call them events, they would have powerlifting, they would have some bodybuilding contests, and it just died. Everybody thought I had to go to L.A. or the Bay Area. Right, and that's not true. And what you've said is, hey, let's ex let's let's take everything from local talent, and give them a chance. And I, I as I as I've went three times now and seen what you've done, I think it's very admirable because you have created some enthusiasm for the Iron Game again. I, I wouldn't even say give them the chance, give them the exposure. Yes, because back w during my little fun time. I only had strength and health at once a year. They did a bench press competition. Yeah. And that was it. There was nothing. 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 I, I couldn't even tell you where an event was. Yeah. I got posters or pamphlets in the mail for a bodybuilding show, but a powerlifting event. And now you have people that have that. Op it's a presented opportunity. Lord, what do you, you got? Four or five a year at the, at the gym? At the beginning. At, yeah, at the, at, in, yeah. In Bakersfield. Yeah. In Bakersfield. Yeah. So you have. Would it four or five? That's like every two and a half months. Right. You have an opportunity to, to showcase, and it's a victory. It is. It is. And there's nothing like a victory. It, it, those white lights is just like a, a proud moment. It's birth. Uh -huh. You are birthing. You have given birth to a to something, and you're giving people an opportunity yeah. to birth their iron journey. Yeah. And it's and they're bitten. And that's a big step too, isn't it? Because people don't realize what it takes to promote something. No, it's it was it was a very big step. I was actually, uh, you know, even the president of the USPA denied it. He said no. Um, oh, even really? going to my yeah, even going to my father and and even Ken. Well, let's hit. You know, Ken always says to me, "Well, son, let's sit down and have a talk about this." And uh, every, everyone was worried. You know, they didn't want to see me lose money because. Uh -huh. Uh, the powerlifting promotions you spent meat director spent more money you than do. they earned <laughs> you do. And, and they do it because of the a, passion and, and the of love sport. sport so you know I, I put a business plan together I said you know I've got a degree in this I want might as well put a plan together to minimize my my losses and we went from remember Steve we went the from the deadlift uh, it, it started off with a bench deadlift only and it was packed and then the second event, it was about 400 people in the house. And then we went to four, my first full power a year later was 75 lifters, 400 people. And, and two-day event. <laughs> then two-day <laughs> events. And, and it, it was definitely, uh, it, it was showcasing uh, athletes and their strength. And it gave, it gave people an opportunity to re, re, how do you say, uh, restart their, 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 their youth athleticism. I give them a different venue because yeah, bef yeah. before you started showing people a different venue, they had to eat 
air and drink water and, and nasty fish, or they went and jumped uh, jumped up and down as fast as they could and did these things called pull-ups. <laughs> and that was all they had. So either you were going to starve yourself or you were going to run yourself ragged. And you gave them something like, no, just come give it your best shot. Yes. Eat. Eat plenty, yes, <laughs> yes. and lift heavy. <laughs> Don't diet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've got a friend, and uh, he no, doesn't know I follow him on there, and it's really um, been uh, exciting for me because we went to high school together, and he's participated in some of your shows, and he went on to set a world record a few years ago. It's Kevin Pollard. Oh, Kevin. And yeah. So Kevin, is, and we graduated together. Okay. At South High School, <coughs> and. Um, I, when I saw that, I'm like, well, what a cool thing yeah. because an old guy yeah. can come in and start yep. and then do that. And Kevin set a world record, I think, in yep. Ireland or something. We like were that. we were in Ireland together. Yes, and yep. he's such a neat guy. He works with a friend of mine, Vince Roach, over at um, Kirschman Wakefield. And um, I just thought, what a cool thing. And I always meant to tell you that. I go, yeah. I follow him because I saw him in a picture at your place, and then I – follow some things and I just thought way to go Kevin I haven't never talked to him about yeah. it but I'm just saying I got to see that and I know how that can inspire an old dude and I wouldn't even say uh, um, starts that gives you a place to putt still yes you can't long drive anymore <laughs> but you can still putt yes. right. like it gives you like okay I'm, I'm just kind of going along with the flow I need something to get my mind back and get my drive back the Lord's got an event I'm gonna do an event yes I'm in the gym all the time, so hey, let's, let's put some weight put in it on there. the platform. You know, it have some gives fun. Gives you a focal point. It gives you. A, 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 I need to put it all together, and get everything right. Oh, I'm back on point. Good to go. Yeah, and and we all know. And if you don't know this, you're gonna find it out. I always tell the young guys around me that the name of the game is injuries. Right. And if you're gonna live long enough, you're going to get injured. Oh, yeah. And if you get older <laughs> and you compete in an age group, yeah, it levels the playing field. Right. You know, and 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 so you know, doing over sixty, but have fun doing it. Right. And it and you know, and I think what you're building is community. Oh, it's an amazing community. Yeah. And and, and that was missing so much from it, this yeah, sport. It is. It was. You guys have you guys have came in and filled a niche. Yeah. For this town. It reminds me of when I was a pup and I'd go in and I'd watch you guys, <laughs> and it was just like this cool energy of I could just sit in the corner and curl comb my little twenties and watch you guys lift and it was like oh wow that's cool and you guys would come in yell at each other scream and have fun laugh and joke and then everybody was pushed away yeah yeah and the music was turned down really low don't talk too loud <laughs> put the weights down yeah. <laughs> and it just was gone the energy was gone yeah and lord brought the energy he did. back he did i like i like that you know this is a sport of uh you're never strong enough and a lot of people try to go in to be the strongest. And, and that's the, the mind, the, the, the thought process of going in, trying to be the strongest when you are never, ever, ever strong enough. It, 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 it's one of those things that I, I tell people a lot. You have to be satisfied where you're at, mm -hmm. what, what, you know, your injuries. And that's why I think it's so important to go to somebody who can help you through that because your right. shows have you know, and, and this is what's good to go see from the outside looking in. You go see your show, and they're professionally run. You got great judges. You got the quit Hall of Famer judges. Yes, you got you got spot on um, uh, equipment. Right. And then I love the fact that you guys have all the weight classes. You're bringing in the gals. You're bringing in the guys. You're bringing in the young ones and the old ones, and giving everybody, like Steve said, a place to. Try to yeah. start. Get your feet wet. Honesty. Yeah, that's true. Honesty. Honesty. I remember arguing with you, and I caught myself because I was arguing with you <laughs> over uh, certain individuals and their bench press records. And you're like, "No, Steve, they were lift. They, they had shirts on." I was like, "No, they didn't." And I was arguing with Lord, and I go, "Why am I arguing with the guy that this is what he does? I'm arguing <laughs> with." And I stopped myself, and then the realization of, "Oh my God, if I'd have had an honest answer, I might have changed my path." Yeah. Yes. But there was no honest answer. But Steve, that's what I like about you. Lord, that's what I like about you. You know, as I'm the old guy, I'm 64. I can look and I don't even answer questions anymore. I say, call Steve. 
go to Lord's. You know, because now that is an answer. It's, it is honesty. Yes. Because you're going to get somebody to go see you guys, and you know you're not going to, like you said, Lord, you know, try to squeeze as much money out of them, but like you said, Steve, not give them the real truth. Yes. Just give them the carrot that's still right out here. What, right. You know, you want the next level, come back to me the next time, but we'll go in the back room, which is where the gym has always, you know, had its, um, it ha- had its power. Right. Is the draw into the back room, the draw into the, hey, let me show you what I have behind this back, you know, and it's not, that is not the truth. And if you're out there chasing that dream, it won't, it never will materialize. Come see Sportslanders West, Steve. Come see Lord at NOS uh, uh, Power. And, and, and if people will listen to that, they'll be so much farther ahead. They will be. With a lot less health problems. Because this industry can kill you. Yeah. It can kill you. We're seeing that happen a lot. And it's not worth anybody's life. No. You know, I mean, like we said, the little, the, what's worth it, Lord, is what you're doing and promoting other people, lifting them up. What Steve's doing by saying, hey, let me sell you something that will work. Let me sell you something that, you know, it's, it's reasonable and I'm not going to have you. I tell people all the time, I sell protein, but go eat some food first. Yes. Then come back and see me. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a. It, During the pandemic, didn't we all say push up, pull up, work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we were all forced back to simple exercise. Yeah. You probably had the key to your gym. Yeah. <laughs> Let people in. Brought the whole gym home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And all your friends were calling yeah, you they, too. They were. They actually were. <laughs> Hey, you weren't yeah. using. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> so those are fun times to do it. Lord, what else would you like to leave our audience with as they're out there thinking about, you know, um, you, your legacy, your your journey? Because you're a very accomplished athlete, and you're very accomplished in helping people, train people to achieve their goal. Y- you know, don't don't stop, don't quit. You 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 can you can. Quit. Quit what you're doing because it no longer serves your purpose, but don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up because if you give up, then you're just giving up on everything. You're, you're, you're exhausted in the wrong direction. So quit doing things that no longer serve you or value you, but don't give up on the search of something new. And as I go through my process, my journey, um, you know, I, it started with the book. It, it started with an athlete. It started with coaching. It started with training people. It started then it evolved into uh, the getting educated and writing a book and and and, and thinking that it was it was going to be thrown in the rubbish can. Um, but then it took off. It exploded. And then why not do promotions? That took off. And then let's build a gym. And Steve was there side by side with me every minute of the day watching me and seeing how how it, it was going to happen it's not going to happen and then it took <laughs> off and then well what else can we do you know I've, I've got people that can that i've got junior uh, uh coaches i've kind of accelerated into a senior program they're taking the brunt of what i had to do um let, let's start a powerlifting team, and that's where we started the uh, Special Olympics powerlifting team. I love that. I, I wanted know? to say I that. I was getting ready to say it right oh, now. The, well, and you were there at, yes, the, I at was. the event, and you saw it half was, of the team. It was team. sensational. Yeah. And I never thought of that. I mean, yeah. why not let people do what they can do right. in a great o- opportunity to get stronger? Right. And help. I love that. I mean, our producer, Mike Harvey, was there with me. At oh, that yeah. show, yeah. and it was just, it was, I told him, I go, I, when, I, when I took Mike, I go, you're going to see stuff today that is done right. Yeah. And and, and it was, I mean, I, there again, it wasn't disappointing at all. You, right. you guys have done that, and you guys are continuing to do it. Yeah, let's, let's just keep doing some amazing things. You, you know, I, I, a lot of people, you know, and, and I always tell people, I've learned more in my um, 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s than I did in my 20s because it wasn't real. And when you have to train without the aid of, you know, um, anabolics or the growth hormone or the blood doping or the GH or the insulin, you know, you, when, you, when you have to do that, you have to rely on other things. And it comes knowledge. Right. And then and, and as, as you start to get advanced, you start, you know, um, doing things that you said I'll probably never do, but you still are doing what you can. Right. You know, people will look at me, my, my son-in-law goes, hey, can I come work out with you? I go, you could, but it'd be a waste of your time. 
because I, what I do, you don't need. Right. You know, if you're 64 and you're just broke up, maybe. But you know, I, I do what I can because I still am able to. And I love that saying that you have. Do what you can. Yeah. You, you know, I, when I was raised, I was, I was uh, at nine years old. I had this, this sign that my, that my sister had for me. And it said, uh, you know, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. Oh, and I and I've, I've had I've had that. that. That's a that's a say law <laughs> moment. Yeah, and I've had that. My sister actually got it for me for my birthday. Re recreated it uh-huh. for my birthday, and you know, it's you're not done. You're not over. No matter how old you are, I'm 46, and I'm still going to get on the platform in, in October with the Special Olympics powerlifting team, and, and I'm going to you know not only just lead by example that I can still do it. Uh-huh. Am I still the best in the world? I may not be the best in the world, and that's fine. I, I may be last in the world, but I'm still having a great time on the platform with I everybody. You know, my time was my time, and if my time happens again, it'll happen. But I'm okay with it not. Well, I, I, you, you've touched on one thing, and I don't want to let us go before we talked about it. You had told me before the show started that you were dyslexic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, seventh and, grade. And, and, and what's that? I was uh, diagnosed in seventh grade. Is it? I, I think I talked to Steve about it um, because I was diagnosed with my speech impediment and a hearing issue when I was in second grade. And, and, it, and how it was treated back then yeah. and how it was a stumbling block for me for quite a few years until I learned how to deal with it. How did you, how did you work through it? <laughs> Well, I, luckily, that's a success story. Luckily, uh, in seventh grade, I was taken to an institute of learning, and they taught me some key, key like key uh, tools that can really help me. Um, but when I went to high school, there was no more help, and so I've I've failed out of college quite a few times. But you didn't let that but stop you. I didn't let yeah. it stop. Years and, later, and I wrote went a back. book. That's good. Yeah. The, the daylight's out yeah. of me. I mean, you know, and you wrote a book. I, you know, what, when I was getting yeah, not, my, not what well, you writing a book, but me writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was getting my, my, my bachelor's degree, I started off strong. I started to, to, you know, I graduated with like a 2.7 GPA, uh, going into my master's program. Um, uh, you know, I went for my MBA and failed out of my last two, my first two classes and they, they put me on academic suspension. And so I had to just kind of realign myself, realign my heart, realign my mental thinking, my, my temper. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, my temper was not good going through school. Um, I ended up taking uh, exercise science courses. I've been studying it my entire life, and I graduated with a 3.9 GPA wow. with honors. And, and, you know, and I said, well, okay, well, let's, let's see if I can become a teacher, fell down exam. And so what do I do? So I said, you know, I guess I'll see what powerlifting has for me. And what I did that. And you're where you're supposed to be. You know, I I would say that being able to step back and I am proud of what you guys have done, Lord and Steve. I'm very proud because it's um, I step back and see the fact that you did overcome what people would see as a unsurmountable obstacle. And you overcame that. You know, I love the fact that your sister made you a plaque said, God, don't make no junk. I yep. love that. I think that's going to be my new motto of my car producer. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but Steve, it's the same thing with you. I mean, you guys have, you guys have done it. So I do want to shake your hand. Oh, yeah. Say, thank you. Say thank you. And these meaty paws, both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's those powerlifting hands. You know, it, it, when, you, when, you sh- when you shake a powerlifter's hands, you know that they can grip some things. <laughs> one of my favorite things about your father is I remember one day he came and got me in the gym. And you go, Steve, come watch me real quick. And it's, and it's a throwback to what you said. When you do it, the things that you can still accomplish, like you're still lifting. And you, he came and got me. What was that? Your dad's what, 70? He, he's, yeah, he's 72 right now. Oh, man. Well, he'll be 72. So he would have been about 67. He walks over and goes, Steve, watch me real quick. And I'm like, okay, cool. And that's when the CrossFit's still going on. And they had a rope. And what is that floor? What did you say, about 40, 25 feet? 25 feet in yeah. there. And he goes, okay, watch the rope. And he cocks his legs up, and he goes all the way to the top, slaps it, and comes all the way down, and smiles and walks around. I was like, well, so much for using the old excuse, huh? <laughs> I, I, when, I, I, when the last time I was in your gym, I looked up there, 
And I thought, I wonder if I can climb that. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, mean, I just, it, I, I had a, I was, I, I, I but I, it, so I know what he, he did. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, as a young pup, that may not be a lot. As a 20 year old. But, <laughs> yeah. but 70 or 67, that's an accomplishment. Yes. Yeah. So you come from good stock, Lord. Yes. yes. Hey, Steve, you come from good stock. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Seen his size? Huh? Jeez, man. <laughs> I haven't met a cheeseburger I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, Lord, could you uh, um, uh, talk about um, Trixie? Oh, I'd love to. She's beautiful. Yeah, look at the smile on her face. So Trixie is super sweet, approximately eight years old, an old American pit bull terrier, lab mix. Her smile can, can melt the toughest of hearts. She absolutely adores everyone and wants to get into your lap so you can catch all the love that is constantly pouring out of her. She is absolute doll. Needs some work on manners, though as she can help, she can't help but jump on people because she just loves them so much. Who cares if she has only one, she has only met you just once if you need a constant reminder of just how awesome you are. She's your girl. She would absolutely love it if you could adopt her, best friend forever, newbie, along with her, but she won't mind being the only receptor of your love and attention. Also, she may be part fish because she loves to swim. I love that. Go out and see uh, uh, John Haddad, Meredith um, Carter. They do a great do job at Lucky's Rescue, and you can see it. Um, There's there. nothing like a dog's love. You know, it's unconditional. <laughs> it just is. I mean, you know, there's a You leave for five minutes, they're happy to see you. You leave for 10 <laughs> days, they're happy to see you. No matter what, they are happy to see you. <laughs> they are. I want to thank our producer, Alex Howe, executive producer, Mike Harvey. I got, I got a new position, Mike. Associate producer, Tom Tushnell. Wow, I got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> that must be an array. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, Nathaniel Tweed is our supervising producer, creative consultant. Tessa Jimenez, got a new last name, Tessa. Tom, uh, Taylor Touchstone and our MLH Solutions Production Distributing. Lunch Break is a 511 Media Group production, and we're so glad to be part of that. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I enjoyed having you two on. Uh, it's kind of a favorite subject of mine. But there again, I, I'm it's proud of you guys. Blessing. You guys need to go out, check out NOS Power, Lord Elliott, and the Sportslanders West, Steve Cutter. God bless. <laughs>